Once again, good morning. Naimbag ngagsapa kanya tayo, amin. It's a bless, it's a privilege, and I am blessed to stand before you this morning. Uh, just to remember, I was then the last time that I stand here. I can just remember I was I am dance team standing in front there, but this time I thank God going back here in Bother Church to stand before you and preach the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, what I'll be sharing is a message that has inspired me during this pandemic. And also, I believe that it will also inspire us and will awaken each one of us as we are called to be the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are thankful and you are believing that you are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, can we say aloud, praise the Lord. The bride of Jesus are the one who believe Jesus Christ. When we accepted him, that they got bride asawa na tayo ni Apo Diyos. Whether you are a female or a, ma- um, or a male, we are generally the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be sharing three points in this, from basing from this topic. The first one that we'll be seeing this morning is we will be looking what is the proper cloth that the bride should wear. Next one will be the next letter P, the, the process of the Jewish marriage, how it was related with us. The process of the marriage during this time is different from our time. The process of the Jewish culture is different from us here in Asia, Philippines, and even other nations. And the third one, letter P, is the preparation as we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what should we, or what should be our character? Or how should we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ? So from, basing from these three points, may we continually know more and be awakened, as I've said, on how are we living. Kasano tayong agbyag as a Christiano? Maybe some of you know Jesus Christ for how many years? Maybe 20 years, 30? Or maybe some of us are 5 or 8 years but God is not looking on how long did we know Jesus. But this time, God is looking on how much are we preparing for His coming. Basing from this passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Next slide. And this is also the cry or this is the prayer of Paul to the Corinthian church. We know Corinthian church during this time was divided. There are many problems of the Corinthian church. But this is also the desire and prayer of Apostle Paul to the Corinthian church. And even it's not only Corinthian church, but also during this time. So can we read this passage all together? Let's read. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise to you one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. The word of the Lord, before we will continue, let us all bow our heads and let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for this morning, as you have called every one of us, and this is your time. Lord, speak to us in your very special way. May you open our spiritual ears to hear you, and may you open our spiritual eyes to see the deep truths of your word this morning. We thank you of you have chosen us as your bride. Lord, help us to prepare. The way that you desire for us is not the way that we want, but it is in line with the word, O God. Lord, as we listen to your word this morning, O God, remove anything that can hinder us, O God, but freely speak to us in your very special way. Holy Spirit, be our teacher, and Lord God, keep opening our spiritual ears, our hearts this morning. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So with this message, though I cannot see your... with, with uh, You cannot... Uh, I mean, you are wearing mask, but you are freely open to say amen. And but nga naka-close di ay mouth di ba? And though I cannot see your smiles, I believe there is smiles in you. And happy to be in the house of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, first one, let us see. Why did Paul told these things in the Corinthian church? This is his desire, that he may present all these believers as a pure virgin to whom... To our husband, Jesus Christ. Next verse. Why? In verse 13, it says, But I am afraid 
that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, we know how we failed from the start Eve was deceived. Your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. I mean devotion. So while we are living here on earth as we are bride of Jesus Christ, there are many things that may come and test us. There are many things that will try to deceive, not to give our full attention to our Lord Jesus Christ. Not to, full, not to give our full devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ or to our husband. That's why this is the desire also of Paul. While he is having his journey, Paul was called by God to be an apostle to preach the word of God. So even for us, all of the leaders, of everyone who is standing in here, and even I believe every one of us, we desire that while we are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be perfectly or blameless, pure virgin, to stand in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. But in how or what ways? First point that I'll be sharing is, as a bride of Christ, we should wear the proper cloth. There is a proper cloth attire that we need to have wear. For instance, if there is a burial, there should be a proper attire that you should use. They said, you should not use a bright color. It means you are rejoicing. But if you will mourn with the, with the family, you should also wear the proper cloth or color of, the, of your clothing. And even if you are, especially even for wedding, you should also wear the best clothing, right? Kapag yung isang babae, he is the, he is the bride. He will wear usually gown, the best. So even for us, as we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not pretending here a literal clothing, but it's a spiritual clothing that God's desire as we are the bride. What should be our attire? To wear as the bride of Christ. We can see this one in the book of Psalms. Chapter 45 verses 13 to 14. I'll be reading. All the glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold and embroidered garments. She is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her and are brought to you. So this first, the first one is gown is interwoven with gold. The spiritual meaning of this is that the cloth of our salvation. If we are the bride of Jesus Christ, we need to wear this cloth. It means we should wear the cloth of salvation or we need to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Bride of Jesus. Not every people in this world are considered to become bride. Only those who believe Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So to those who believe Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, can we say aloud, Amen? Yes. And let us be thankful, as I've said, when we receive Jesus Christ, it's not by our own ability, but He has given us this faith. But only when did this faith come to us? When we receive the grace of God. But when we receive the grace, starting when we humble ourselves. So uh, when we receive this cloth or when we receive Jesus Christ, this cloth, it signifies the righteousness clothing for our redemption. We are redeemed from this world. Even it is to distinguish us from the world. We are different from the world who are living. As Christians, we are different from unbelievers. Our attitude should be different from them. Our mindset should be different from them. If people are living here on evil ways, for us as a Christian, are we going to go with them? No. But we should live in the worldly life. I mean in the holy life that God wants these are for us. This cloth is for our holy living and life. And it says, it is a cloth to enter heaven. So when we receive Jesus Christ, we can enter the kingdom. We cannot enter the kingdom of God because of our own deeds. We did not kill anything. We are doing good all these things. No. The result only when we believe Jesus is the good actions. But first, we need to wear this cloth. Or it means to become the bride of Jesus, we need to receive Him as our personal Lord and Savior. After which, we need to wear this cloth, another cloth, for the wedding banquet. It means this is embroidered. We need to wear this for the banquet in heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, there will be also a wedding. That is what we are waiting for. We did not yet 
we are only we only believe Jesus Christ but marriage we are not yet marriage with Jesus Christ married I mean we will only be engaged in marriage the time that Jesus Christ will come in his second coming but in that we should also wear this cloth wedding banquet cloth being a Christian also is not enough nga Kristiano tayo lang it's not it. and after that we are doing all these things that we want no we need to grow as a Christian believer in our life and being a faithful and so that we can wear this cloth for the wedding banquet. Why? If we will not wear this wedding banquet, we will not be qualified to enter. We can see this parable in Matthew, in during the parable of the wedding banquet in Matthew 22. It says here, But when the king came in to see the guest, this is the parable that everybody were called. God said, go and call every people in the streets and every people to join with me in the banquet. But in verse 11, it says, But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. There is a man who entered, but he's not wearing, wearing wedding clothes. That's why friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. So after that, did the man stay in that wedding clothes? Banquet? No. He was disqualified. He is not wearing this cloth. So they brought him out from that place. So for us, salvation is already sh sure in that person, but only the wedding bank cloth he is not wearing. So he was not qualified to join the wedding banquet. For us, let us not be disqualified. We should always wear these two cloths. The first one is that salvation. Already we have that one, all of us. But the second clause, this should be the one that we should work it out. Our prayer, we should wear this one. But how should we wear or How can we have this second cloth in our life? I'll be sharing that one in the next point. So the first one, the clo proper cloth in our life. Always remember two things. Being a Christian is not enough. But our prayer is that we should also wear this another cloth. So that we can enjoy and even we are saying bride of Christ, but if we don't have this cloth, we can we will be disqualified. So let us not be disqualified. Let us always wear this cloth in the wedding banquet that God's desire. The next one is that let us also relate the process for Jewish marriage in here. Why Jewish? Because this Bible was written in Israel. Sometimes mostly Why? We have different traditions here in the Philippines and even in Israel. So if we want more to understand the Bible, we need to go back and we need to also to study the tradition and culture of Israel. So this time we will talk about the tradition of the Jewish marriage. Are you excited? <laughs> you know, it, this is also related with us. Why did I take this and relate it in our Christian life? The marriage here in the Philippines is also different from other countries. But why did our Lord Jesus Christ use the Jewish marriage in line with us while waiting for the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ? So let's first see the process in the process of the Jewish marriage. The first one is the choosing of the bride. Who chose the bride in the Jewish culture? It's not the woman. It is the father's choice or parental arrangement, or parents' arrangement. Sometimes in our old tradition, the parents are naikalon. The parents are the one who is choosing the, the husband or the wife of their children. This time, who chose your wife or husband? Are you the one or your parents? So, yes, this in our modern times, modern times, because, or even especially this time, the young ones, they can just easily choose. Easily that they can get. But in the tradition, in the old times, it is their parents, especially father, is the one who is choosing the wife for their, for their son. Let us see some illustration in the background so that we can see that this is true. In the life of Abraham, Abraham chose a wife for his son, Isaac. Hanya ni Isaac tinagpili. No, sino tip mapangasawa na? But it is Abraham. In Genesis 24, I'll be reading, I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, whom among I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son 
Isaac. Abraham is talking here to his servant, who is his servant, Eleazar. So he said, Eleazar, before I will die, I don't want that you will get a wife for my son Isaac here, but go to my own place and go and look for a wife for my son. So this faithful servant followed, to cut the story short, he met Rebecca. And that was the husband, I mean the wife of Isaac. And it flows to his son. So Isaac also when he become big and grown enough, also he chose a wife for his son Jacob. So pinili ni tatang ko tayo sa mga tagpili ti maging asawa ni anak ko. So he also he he also chose. It says also in Genesis, go at once at Padan Aram to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel, and take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So there Laban has has um. Two daughter, they are Leah and Rachel. But Isaac choose Rachel during this time. So in here we can see the Jewish culture is that it's the father who choose the wife for their son. Let us take it also in the spiritual way. Who choose us? Our Father in heaven also have chosen us. God chose us. It is not us who chose God. Amen. If we know and believe that God has chosen us, then let us be thankful that He chose us once again. Can we say aloud, praise the Lord? Why among billions of people? Why God chose us and He has given us faith? And by our own, if we will see ourselves, we are not qualified. But God has chosen us among billions of people to become His bride. When we accepted our Lord Jesus Christ, let us be thankful that He has chosen us. And now, we are here worshiping God. And now, He has chosen us to continually worship our Lord Jesus Christ. So, let us be thankful that He has chosen us. And as He has chosen us, let us give ourselves, let us give our life to worship Him. Let us be willing also to continually serve Him in the way that He wants us. And as, one, as He desires for each one of us. Another one in here. The next, even in Deuteronomy. Okay, let's go back. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, it says, For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be His own special treasure. Meron pang special treasure na nga lang. Special ba? That's why, as we said, we are special in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, let us be. Let us see on how God has chosen us and be thankful. The next process is that during the betrothal period, or if they will be engaged, or a kalon, or pamamanhikan, so the bride will go. I mean, the groom will go to the house of the bride. Sino ba tido mandano? Hindi ba ba? Ibat dahil lalaki. Di ba lalaki? So the groom will go to the house of the woman. So during this time, the bridegroom brings kituba. That is the marriage contract in, the, in their time to the bride. So, for us, the marriage contract is that they will be bringing during the wedding in our culture. But their culture, the, the bridegroom will carry that marriage contract and he, he will go to the house of the woman. What is that marriage contract this time? The marriage contract during this time, little bit picture of it, the rights and responsibilities and demands and condition of the bride were written there. This should be the thing that you need to do as a wife and even as husband. Iso tina isurat ije marriage contract. This time our marriage contract, the names of the husband and wife and even the ninos and ninas were written, right? But in their time, that's why if you can see the picture, they are long. It says this is the responsibilities of a wife. This is the responsibilities of the husband. But that ketuba during this time is we call Torah or the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. When our Lord Jesus Christ, as He is our groom, we are the bride, He has given us something that is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many things that He has instructed for us to do as we are the bride while living here on earth. Why did God has given us this Bible? It is for us to strengthen our spiritual life, right? There are many things that we need to follow. There are many things that we need to do as a believers, as a bride in this time. This word of God is not just given for us to study or just to read. But this is our life. 
but this is the one who will guide us. This is the one who will continually give us instruction on how are we going to live as the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will not see and we will not be qualified if we love this world. But no, as God said, if you are my bride, continually read the word of God, love me. So that is the first one that the bridegroom will bring, Kituba. But this time, the word of God he has given us. Another one is that during this time, the groom brings betrothal expenses, in Hebrew word mohar, on other term, in short, money. The woman, or I mean the groom should bring money, kwarta. And this time, as I've heard before, if a woman or a man will go and court a woman, he said, at the time, I don't know if it's also still today, I wada elf mo. For bugias or other, I don't know. But often time I hear this one. If you have like this, okay. If that time, that man should always have money. Why? Because during the betrothal period or the engagement that this wife, I mean that uh, woman will go to the house, I mean the, the man will go to the house of the woman, should first bring kituba and even the expenses money. Why? There is one week Sa atin, I don't know if two days that apan pumama, papa, papanhikan yung babae, the family, I mean the, the men into the house, is that for them is, it takes one week. Let us see in here in Genesis. Finish this daughter's bridal week during this time that Jacob or Isaac had chosen Rachel, it's not Leah. Then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. So within that one week, the groom will spend many. He will be the one to give all the expenses. And even thinking all people is just like a festivity festival. So thinking there are a lot of food and it should be breakfast, lunch, and dinner, everything. The woman will not spend anything, only the men will spend everything. So, if you will think, dapat talaga maraming pera yung lalaki to go so that he will give everything and he will spend everything. And just imagine, it's one week. Celebration is not only one day. That is the culture of Hebrew. Let us also once again go back in our spiritually. As we see that Jesus Christ was the one who died for us, He paid everything for us. In what way? Through His death and resurrection. We did not pay anything so that God will choose us. Did we give anything to God? Lord, No. Jesus was the one who have chosen us and He was the one who paid everything for us. We did not do anything. We just need to accept Him in our life. In what way that He paid everything? It is through His death in the Calvary. That is His love to us. So, we can see in here that Jesus Christ have finished everything. Like the groom, he will not allow his wife, future wife, to spend everything. For us also, we are the bride. Did not, Jesus Christ did not allow us to give whatever. Why? We cannot give anything. But Jesus Christ finished everything as he is the groom in our life. The next one is that while they are having also in their house, let's just imagine, how will they give the legality of the betrothal period? How can they say already that sila na? Through the drinking of wine of the bride. As I said, seven days. In that seven days, to give us a sign that they are legally engaged, when the woman will drink the wine, it says that, okay, tayo na. Itatakat nagbiit nga, ibagati kabataan nga tayo na. It's just a one day, sila nang kaagad. But in that time, there is really a process. And drinking the wine, it, say, it means that if the woman has drink the wine, okay. The man was so happy, he says that he accepted and we will get married in the future days to come. So, relating with this, when did we see also this wine? Remembering what is the first, what is the first miraculous sign that Jesus Christ had made? It is when Jesus Christ turned the water into wine in John. If there will be a first, there should be the last. If there will be a second or third, he can just say it is the miraculous sign. But why did our Lord Jesus Christ said it is the first miraculous signs 
the water was turned into wine. And the last miraculous sign, He accomplished these things when He died on the cross for us. So it means, it's not only that Jesus Christ just turned the water into wine, but there is the meaning. Wine it signifies, or blood signifies, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that time also, when did the time that we are taking in, as we are the bride of Jesus Christ? As I've said, the legality in the old culture, so that the woman will become the bride of the groom, is that he will drink. For us also, we are the bride of Jesus Christ. During Holy Communion, if you remember, we are taking the wine. It means, it says, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this is also a way that we are accepting Jesus Christ. Every time that we are taking in the Holy Communion, it is a signifying that we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So with this, hoping that you can, you can follow with all this process. So the first one, as I've said, the, the choosing is that the Father chose us. And the second one, as we are the bride, He has given us the word of our Lord Jesus Christ that will always remind us to do whatever the task that we need to do. The third one is that He had paid everything for us. We did not end, give anything to God. But Jesus Christ died for us and finished everything on the cross. And the fourth one is that if for us to be legally united and be engaged with Jesus Christ is that when we take this cup or wine and really as He died on the cross, it is believing that He accomplished everything for us. And the next one, fifth one, is that there should be also an oath for purity. For us, for, for them, that they should also have the promise. They should always be pure. They should be pure in both sides. In this time, purity, it means it is our consecration or baptism. After we receive Jesus Christ and even having our Holy Communion, we have the sacraments baptism. Why we need to be baptized? It means we are united with our Lord Jesus Christ. So after we believe Jesus Christ, we are having this baptism. Those who are baptized here, can you raise your hand? Water baptism, why we need to be baptized? It is a sign for us that it is our oath of purity to our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not only that we are baptized because it is a sacrament or it is the tradition of the church. No, even in the culture of the Jewish, even in the Bible it says, why? As it says in Romans, we were therefore buried with Christ with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So when we are baptized, we said, the old has gone, the new has come. If we have Jesus Christ and we accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior and we were baptized, it means we are united with our Lord Jesus Christ. But the thing is that we need to continually stay and to hold this purity in our life while waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last one that the groom will give, it is a gift, presentation. In Hebrew, we call it mathan or Greek charismathan. Or for our term, we are calling it dore. So the woman, the, the groom should always have much money. He will spend seven days all and not enough agitated by the gift and even that gift is only not only only to the woman but he should also give to all the family of the woman very nice if that is also the tradition that is the tradition during this time sobrang nag spend talaga na yung lalaki what is this gift let us see some illustration in the bible genesis then the servant brought this is the servant of this is the servant of Abraham. He will give so that the, his son Isaac will have a wife. He, then the servant brought out gold and silver, jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. So it's not empty-handed. The servant did not go the house, in the house of Rebecca empty-handed, but he brought something. That is a gift. Jesus Christ also, as He is our groom, what is that gift that He has given us? It's the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus Christ went up to heaven, He said, wait until the coming of, wait until the promised Holy Spirit will come and I will give you. That is the promise that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. 
How important is the Holy Spirit in us? So in their culture, it is the gift. But this time, Jesus Christ as our groom, what is the gift that He has given us? That is the Holy Spirit. What is the importance of the Holy Spirit in us? As it says in John chapter 14, verse 26. Can we read all together? Let's read. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So that is the work. Why did our Lord Jesus Christ has given us His Holy Spirit this time? So that He will teach us on the things that we should do while living here on earth. So that He will remind us what to do as the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. If there is no Holy Spirit in us, we cannot do anything. As we said, the Holy Spirit is making all things possible in our life. So how important is the Holy Spirit? That's why before Jesus Christ, our groom went up to heaven to prepare the place for us. He has given us this Holy Spirit. That is the gift for us. And we should always accept. And this gift is free, as I've said. The gift is free. We, can, we will not pay. And everybody wants gift, right? It's a gift. You will accept it. But if you will pay, that is not considered as a gift. So we did not also give something again to our Lord Jesus Christ so that He will give that thing to us. But let us be thankful. Everything that He is giving us, these things, this will always help us in our life. So that is the process. So all from these things, so uh, going back, if you will go with me, from the house, if you just imagine the engage or the pamamanhikan time was finished, everything was given uh, within seven days. So this time, if they said that legally they are one, engaged already, so the men will go home and work again. So that during the marriage time, they will have still money to spend. Maybe naubos na yung lahat ng pera niya during engagement time. As I've said, imagine seven days. And even he will give Dory gift to the family. So the men will go home and work so that he will prepare for the marriage date. Even the woman, he will also go home in his house and he will prepare for the coming of their marriage time. What, on what set date? Then they will prepare. Both of them will prepare. So even our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has given us his gift. And he will also go, he said in John, I will go to my house and prepare a place for you. It says in John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If you were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. So Jesus Christ went up to heaven to prepare a place for us. As I've said, we are not yet married to our Lord Jesus Christ. We are only the bride. But this is the awaiting thing that we need to, to have that is to be wed with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we should always be waiting for us. But the question is that we don't know when will our Lord Jesus Christ come. Do you know? Nobody knows it. As it says in Matthew, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Same in 25. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. So for us, as I've said, I relate with the second point, the Jewish tradition. And here comes to my third point. As we don't know when will our Lord Jesus Christ may come. So what should we do then? Are we going to relax? As I've said, the groom went home and really worked. He will not relax. But he will work hard more. Why? He was encouraged that my future wife has accepted me. So as I'm groom, he will prepare and work hard so that they will have money to start as a family. Even the woman, he will also prepare spiritually also for us. How are we preparing spiritually? So while Jesus is in heaven preparing the best place for us, what must we do also as the church today? What must we also do as the bride of Jesus today? Are we going to relax? It's okay. Many years may come. As they said, this is the sign of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not be relaxed in our spiritual life. But as they said, in every worship and every day, let us think this is the last day. That's why if you think that this is your last day, what will you do? You will give your best, right? You will do whatever you want to do before, you, before the end of your life. Same with our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us be thankful if God is not yet coming. Why? Are you prepared? Do you want that Jesus Christ will come today or tomorrow? Huh? 
<laughs> not yet. Why? If you are not yet prepared, if you if you know that you have not been faithful, or still I have something, Lord, I will. I want more to in, to be more closer to you. Or there are many things that I did not yet do to you, God. So if God is giving us opportunity and more time, let us be thankful and let us not waste every time. As we said, time is gold. Whatever the things that was already passed, we cannot return it. But while we, God is giving us opportunity and time for us to keep on drawing to our Lord Jesus Christ, let us move on. So the third point, last point is that the preparation now of the bride while waiting for Jesus Christ. Let us not be relaxed in our spiritual life, but let us always be awakened. This time, many things may hinder us in coming to God. The weather, the typhoons, this virus, or even your families. But thank God, you have overcome these things. That's why we are here. So let us more. This is one way that we are preparing to become the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be sharing four points in this. As a bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, what should I do now? What must I do now? The first one. Can we read together? Go. As a bride, keep longing for the coming of Jesus Christ. Are we longing for this? Yes, let us believe. He says, I will come. Yes, God will come. Though he did not say. That's why it should be our part to be awakened. Because if we know that tomorrow Jesus will come, we will be alert of it and we will know. But God is also testing. How are we really preparing if you are all really loving Him? Even though God doesn't tell us when will He come, our part is that let us keep longing for the coming of Jesus Christ. But in waiting, we may we have this long, long yearn and let us continually have a deep attachment with the Lord of our, with our Lord Jesus Christ. In what way? In our worship. This time, people are longing or people are longing when will this virus stop? People are longing when will this vaccine will come? People are longing when will this COVID will be taken out? That is only in their mind. But spiritually, more than that, Jesus Christ let us always long. Because if our heart will always be set upon to our Lord Jesus Christ, Whatever things that may come, and even they said, worst thing may come, let us not be discouraged. But the more, let us always focus our Lord, our eyes to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us focus our heart to our Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Psalms 42, a very famous one. Can we read this passage? Let's read. As the deer pants for the streams of water, Amen. <laughs> May na. So, as the deer pants for streams of water, this deer is really longing. This deer, that deer often times run. That is the nature of a deer. A deer will not just stay in one place and just wait for one day. This is where I stay, no. A deer always run, always go and catch and always play. That's why every time also he feels so thirsty and longs for a water. So my soul finds for you. But this King David, he illustrates himself like a deer who always longs for our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, my soul pants for you, O God. It's not my soul pants for you for this world. My soul pants for what is my desire. No, for God. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God. Where can I meet with God? Four times the word God was stated with this verse in one verse only. God, God, God. But that is the desire of David. So even for us as the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we always desire to continually long for Him. We are living here on this earth, but this is just our temporary place. But what is the place that God has set for us prepared? It is His internal kingdom that He had prepared for us. But for us also, yes, we need to do as a human, there are things that we need to do as our calling. But generally, we need to continually ignite our passion, longing for His coming as we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next one. As a bride, keep the purity from sexual immorality. It means we must not love the world or many or make any idols. Or as a bride, let us be keep pure to worship Jesus Christ. If you remember in the Ten Commandments, what is the first commandment? 
Love the Lord your, ano, you shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord your God, he said. So, you should not love any, any other things. And he says in number two, you should not make any idols in the form of anything. So from the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ, why? He knows. Since the start, we know in the, our forefathers what was the downfall of every leaders. It is idolatry. People believe idols in their life. That's why that is also the longing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our forefathers that was their fall down when they continually worship idols in their life. Even until this time, many people, and even as I've said, it's not only idols that Mary, even the Joseph, carved idols, no. Maybe sometimes there are also idols in our life that we cannot see. What is this idols that we are saying? Idols that anything that takes place, the place of our Lord Jesus Christ. Idols na mas kinukuha po niya yung oras natin. Mas pinapahalagaan natin, mas binibigyan natin yung oras. Yun po sinasabi nating idols in our life. So not only that we can see a carved image is an idol, even sometimes invisible idols in our life that takes much the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can consider that also as idols. So God said, you must not love as you are bride. Let, let us continually or love me. Don't love this world. Don't worship any other gods, but only worship me. It says in James chapter 4, You idolatrous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? So it means we, if you are being friend with God, we are hating Him. But it says, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. I'll repeat, anyone who chooses to become the a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So for us, we need to become the friend of Jesus, not to be the friend of this world. And one of the signs of purity in the Old Testament, I will go back, is that if a woman is wearing a billow veil during our marriage, every time people are excited to see if the woman is wearing a veil. Because for them, if the woman is wearing a veil, he is still virgin, pure. That is even in the context in the Old Testament. Where did we where can we find this one? The life, once again, when Rebecca is about to meet Isaac. When Rebecca is so far and he saw Isaac, he said, Who is that man who is there? I'll be reading. It says, He went out to the field one evening to meditate. And as he looked back, looked up, he saw Camus approaching. Isaac was the one here. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. So he got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is the man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. So... Rebecca did not just run and just meet Isaac, but first thing that he did, he put veil literally in himself. What does it mean? This veil, it says that to cover our head with veil, it signifies, as we said, we are the church, the bride of Christ, we are the body. And Jesus Christ is our head. So we need to always cover our head, that Jesus Christ should always be the head. It's not us. We are not living in our own I am the master of my life. No. Jesus Christ is the master of our life. That's why we need to put the veil. Though literally, we are not wearing. Nobody's wearing veil here. But spiritually, as the sign that we are wearing veil, when we always surrender to God and acknowledging that He is the master of our life, He is the head of our life. We are just the body. We are the church. That's why we need to follow who is the head. Even in, a, in the family, there is the father who is the head in the family. They need to obey the Father. Same spiritually. We are the bride. We are the body and Jesus Christ is the head. We should always follow our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is one way on what are we keeping to become pure in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. The third one is that as a bride, keep beautifying our whole existence. When we say beautifying, make it beautiful. We want also literally you want to show your la yourself to your husband or wife as a beautiful, right? Hindi ka naman magpapakita sa asawa mo nga the word nga lusyang. You want to really beautify yourselves beautiful in the eyes, literally. But this time, God is not seeing us literal beauty, but God is always looking as spiritual beauty in our life. In what way are we, as a bride, we need to beautify ourselves now? 
not in an outward appearance, but it is spiritually. Let us see some illustration once again in the Bible. In the time of Esther, if you remember, before a girl turn, came into King Xerxes, why King Xerxes is looking for his queen. That's why there are many beautiful ladies who went and showed themselves. But the blessing is when Esther was the one who was chosen. So when Esther was chosen, before a girl's turn came to go into King Xerxes, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments. Wow, almost a year. Beauty treatments. Six months prescribed for the woman. Six months with oil of mirror. And six with perfumes and cosmetics. So that is the literal preparation of the woman during this time. So, wow, really? One year treatment? Hindi ka kaagad-agad na ipapakasal sa hari in their time. You should undergo one month treatment. Six months treatment with oil you will in your, in your skin and even perfumes and cosmetics. That is King Xerxes. How much for us? We have the King of Kings. He is the, our bride. How much also are we are preparing? Though we are not doing this as literal to beautify, but no. God is looking our beautification spiritually in our life. How much are we investing and giving our best to beautify our spiritual life? Well, how, no, how are we going to beautify spiritually? When we come in our worship, yes. When we come on time or more earlier. When we are giving our best, when we are reading the word of God. When we are having our fellowship, it is our prayer. That is way for us to beautify our spiritual life. God is not looking. And God is always, may we be the apple of the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dapat, kung nakikita tayo ng Panginoon, we should catch the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ. But how to catch the attention? When we are giving the best. Same with the children. If there is a beautiful children and really an attentive, you will catch. He wants to catch your attention. Much more to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ should always see us as a beautiful bride while waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last preparation is that as a bride, keep bringing or preparing the lightened lamps. What is this lamp that we are saying? It signifies the movement of the Holy Spirit. Literally po noon, the, as I've said, the, the wife or the bride went home but he should prepare a lamp in their house. And that lamp should be turned on 24 hours. Dapat po hindi po namamatay yung ilaw. And even the woman will sleep, he will take, bring that lamp in the window so that if the groom will come, ah, he can see there is still light in the house. The woman is still waiting for me. That is in their culture, okay? Spiritually also, as I've said, Jesus Christ is our groom. He is not with us. Where is he in the heaven? He will come. But when he come, he will. He should always find us also being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us not be like a lukewarm Christian this time. Let us not just un become an ordinary Christian this time. As I've said, God is not looking on how how been a Christian, how many years, how we are been a Christian. But Jesus Christ is looking on how are we preparing, and may this may we be like this virgin who is preparing and being taking good care that the lamp will not die even though there will become a strong wind he wants to protect the lamp so that it will be lighted 24 hours for us also how are we also in our spiritual life is there still light or umaandap andap na po pero dapat wag nating hayaan na mamatay yung apoy sa atin let us always desire that there should be always a light in us if it's still like Little. Let us put firewood even in the tabernacle. Every time they are putting firewood in the altar, it should always burn 24 hours. Even for us, let us little by little put fire in our passion once again in coming to our Lord Jesus Christ. To, to end with, even in the story, we know that when Jesus Christ comes, it is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew 25, verses 6 to 7, at midnight, okay, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. We can see the story. There are five wise virgins. There are five foolish virgins. All of them are believers in here. But these five wise in here, 
they have oil in their lamps. That's why God, when Jesus Christ comes, they are ready. How about these five foolish? They don't have oil. That's why when Jesus Christ comes towards them, they don't have anything to show to our Lord Jesus Christ. For us also, the challenge is that while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ, let us become this wise virgin who is preparing so that when Jesus Christ may come, He will see things in our life. As a challenge this morning, this message is that when Jesus Christ will come, will Jesus find us longing every day in our worship? This is our personal question this time. When Jesus Christ will come, will He find us keep keeping our purity as we keep loving Him? Or sometimes our love is...